What's up, peeps? Your boy, Ricky Funes. Welcome to another episode of Tengu's Boxing Talks. Today, we have another special guest, former multiple world champion, Mikey Garcia from Box Snart, California. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, yeah, Mikey. Good one. Yeah, thanks, Ricky. Ya sabes aquí. Thank you. Mikey, look, a lot of people know who you really are and who you were in the boxing world, but tell us a little bit more details who you really are besides in the boxing world. Well, I mean, from, from where you started, uh, what are you doing? Mike sure. Garcia. Look, um, I mean, everybody knows that I come from a boxing family. You know, my older brothers, both of them were boxers. Danny, my oldest brother, started, you know, when he was, you know, back in the 80s, possibly, you know, boxing. And he retired. My brother Robert picked up and he had his, his career, became a world champion in 98. Eventually, he retired from boxing and started training fighters. And that's when I started to box. Um, I had a successful career, like you mentioned. You know, they know from boxing. But, uh, you know, growing up in the boxing family mm -hmm. and being around boxing my whole life, I didn't really have the n most normal childhood like other kids that grow up playing baseball and the sports and soccer and whatever. Yeah, I, I, We didn't have that. In our house, it was always boxing. That's it. Every meal, dinner, table, whatever, it was always boxing talk. <laughs> on the weekends, we we're watching fights. You know, so if we were not watching fights on TV, we were at the fights on the weekends, you know, for, for either Robert's fights or Fernando's fights yeah. or or some of the other guys at the gym, you know, they're fighting. So I didn't really have a, the same childhood as other kids, you know, growing up. Like I said, school activities, school dances. You didn't know that. I didn't know any of that stuff. I, I didn't. For for most people, a lot of times people reminisce about like high school being oh high school is so cool the prom the, prom, the dances the yeah. football games I I can't say anything about that because I didn't go to any of that. Were you saying you were you were started to be very disciplined from that age? Early, yeah. The, well, I started boxing at fourteen. Okay. Which is right at the end of of junior high and getting into high school, right? So I started boxing. Obviously, all the time was dedicated to the sport. After school, straight to the gym. Did you know that at 14 years old that this is what you really wanted to do? Or no. you just started doing it because your brother and it's because it came from the family? It, it, it was more like um, you got to do something because, you know, you're not, you don't play any of the sports. Yeah. And we're in boxing. So it's kind of like, let, let's let's give it a try. But it's not. I never thought that I would accomplish everything that I did yeah. through boxing. I never even had a dream of being a world champion boxer like most kids. At eight or ten, that's what they're thinking. Oh, one day I'm gonna become world champion. I'm gonna be this. I'm gonna be that. Yeah. I didn't have that. You didn't have that mentality nah. at that at yet. Nah, not yet. And and it was always kind of like just let me play with it. Let's see what happens. Let, yeah. Let's do something after school. Let's 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 go and try some boxing. And I started doing that. My first fight was at 14 as an amateur. It was in Commerce. Okay. And um, you know I won. So then we fight a couple more times and we were winning. So a year later. I'm 15. I have nine fights as an amateur, and we joined to enter the Junior Olympics. Okay. And I advanced after the the regional here in California. Mm -hmm. We advanced to to the regional there in in Nevada for the for the states. Yeah. For California and Nevada, I won. That allowed me to go to the nationals. Now we're at the national level in Alexandria, Louisiana. Okay. It was in 03. And I am kind of like, well, I don't know if I want to say the underdog, but no one really knew who I was because I had not been boxing yeah. except for one year. So when we go there, they have like the the favorites to win the, the tournament. Of course. Kids that are already yeah. known and whatever. That people know them already. So my first fight, I win my fight. I advance to the next round and I'm fighting some kid that everybody was high on him. The big, I guess he was already known. People from California knew me because they know who we are. Yeah. So Avia hasta there was like side bets going on, on the side, oh. like about oh our kids <laughs> gonna win. You know? huh? Like nah, who, who's that kid? Mikey's got eleven fights. What are you talking about? You know stuff like that. Well, I won, and that opened everybody's eyes. Like oh wow, this this little kid is is good. He just beat uh, Vernon Barrett. Did and he like, ever make it big? Uh, that guy. He that did. He did. He did turn pro, and he had a few fights that were you know I think he, he, his name was different. It, Vernon. I, it, he might have changed his name because we've seen him. Me and my brother, my brother remembers. Yeah, might have been something like he changed it from Vernon Barrett to something else. But he he did fight some like 
you know, some fights. I didn't get to didn't where your level champion, was at, no. Yeah. But uh, um, anyway, so I, I advanced, and everybody kind of like, wow, who this kid, yeah. pretty good. I lost the final. I lost the final to Michael Concepcion from New York, New Jersey. I think it was New Jersey. I lost the final. That was my first loss. But that allowed everybody to kind of open their eyes like, oh, okay, this kid made it this far, and you know, who is he, and whatnot, and this and that. Yeah. That also allowed me to believe in myself. Like, okay, I, I could see a, a potential career. I mean, if I made it this far yeah. with very little experience. At 15 years old At already? 15 years old, I entered the tournament with nine fights. At the end of the term, I only had 15 fights. Wow, okay. You know, so it's like, okay, I, I can see some possible, you know, future here. You, start, you started thinking that I already. started thinking yeah. that. And also when, when my brother started getting calls from other scouts and managers yeah. asking, who's this kid, you know, is he related? Yeah, he's my little brother, Mikey. Is, okay, okay. So hearing other promoters and managers starting to, you know, Talk mention my it. name, that opened my eyes to... Okay, I you know I, I can see a future. Let me yeah. let me pick it up more. Yeah, and that's when I started to focus more on, in, in boxing and try to win tournaments and you know grow and eventually at eighteen we turned pro and won out you know. But that's that's how how it started. That's crazy. That's how it started. I, where, where did you turn pro, Mikey? Montebello, Montebello. Quiet Canyon. Oh really? <laughs> Quiet Canyon, Montebello. It was uh, sometime. I think it was might have been like in July, like the seventh or fourteenth, something July. Yeah, I remember it was oh uh, six. And uh, going, going going from there, Mikey. Always, I always tell as fighters, uh, being disciplined. And you say you were very disciplined because I remember having Rafael Rellas mm -hmm. out of Gabriel and everybody oh, yeah, else. For sure, he was just straight focused, laced, not. And I always, when I would see you, I go, "Fuck, he's so serious." You know what I mean? Because yeah, yeah. you 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 see that caption on a fighter, like, okay, damn, that's a he don't like to joke around. When it comes to the gym, it's business. Yeah. yeah. But you always kept that mindset, uh, Mikey, and in a training camp and all that. Look, I think I think a lot of it is because of my dad. Yeah, my dad insisted that we take our job very serious, that we dedicate. You know, it's a dangerous sport. Yeah, if you're not fully prepared, you're you're putting your health on the line every time you step in the ring. Small gloves. Everybody's trying to knock you out. It's dangerous. Yeah. So he understands, you know, the danger and why we need to be a hundred percent prepared. So I understood that because of my dad always insisting, insisting yeah. since we we're little, like 14, 15, and I'm at the gym every day after school. We're we're on diet, we're paying, you know, paying attention to our, our weight, yeah. going through the tournament. So todo eso, little by little, just you know, it, it adds up, it adds up. And then in the pros, well, you gotta even do it even more. more. You Correct. can't be going out, you're not gonna be Party, drinking, drinking, partying, yeah. you know, acting a fool. Just because you win a four-round fight, kids now wanna go party. Like, what? Dude, come on. You want a four-round fight, six-round fight? What are you doing at the club? Go get your ass back to the gym. Yeah, you know, yeah. that's you know, you fought on Saturday or Friday. Monday, you're back at the gym. Correct. You know, we we that's how we were. Yeah. You know, unless you were a little injured or a little bruised, you take some I'll take a couple off. days off. Yeah. But you know, now I see a lot of kids or you see through social media more. I think that's influenced a lot, uh, for the negative reasons. Where you see a kid that just won a nice little six round fight, whatever, got a little publicity, <laughs> and, they think, they're, and they think they're you know a big thing, and champion. they're over there celebrating, and yeah. oh, what was your after party? Where's it? After party? Go to bed, bro. <laughs> and and get your again next Go week. do it again next week. You know, and, and but that's how we were, or yeah. that's how my dad was was with us. We finish a fight, we're back in in in, in the in the gym the next week. Yeah. You know, I see this. How Mikey, when when you started coming up and making a name for yourself in. in uh... From one round to two rounds to eight rounds to ten, yeah. rounds. where, what fight did start making a buzz for you? Where a promoter said, "Hey, you know, let's sign this kid." Like say, like what hour? Well, uh, look, I after my fight at the Quiet Canyon, I was already actually I was actually already signed to top rank to turn pro. But oh, really? Okay. The show didn't go through, so I I took a fight at the Quiet Canyon good. just to turn pro. Yeah, good. Um, but I was already under contract with top rank. And they started developing my career, um, fight at a time, you know, little by little, you know, growing. They're building you up. I say the fight that kind of got everybody else's attention mm -hmm. was in 2011, March of 2011. I fought in Atlantic City on a Gamboa show. Uh, Yorkis Gamboa was a headliner. Mm -hmm. He fought uh, Solis. Yes, okay. And I fought Matt Remlard. He was also from East Coast, New Jersey, I, I believe. 
he was at the time ranked like number four or five in the world. He had the NABF, NABO title, undefeated featherweight. I was also undefeated, and I was challenging for his titles, but also the ranking basically because yeah. I was ranked maybe like nine or something. He was ranked number five, and so they were trying to match up, you know, the featherweights like yeah, yeah. me and maybe the you know like the Gamboas and yeah. Lopez and Salido and all the guys that were there. Yeah. So I was the up and coming fighter, right? So that fight opened the doors because. It was on HBO. It was my first HBO appearance. Really? It was, I was excited. I was motivated. I was hungry. Nervous? Not nervous. I yeah. was hungry. Okay. So I'm like, this is the opportunity. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, I've always been very confident. Yeah. I was never really nervous in, in any of my fights. I was always very confident, like just another day in the office. Because you knew you put you know? in that I work. I I put the time, the work. I, I knew my, I, my abilities. Yeah. I, I believe in myself. So I, I was very, very confident going into that fight. And... We won the fight. I dropped them a couple times. I stopped them like in the 10th or 11th round, I forget. 10th round, I think it was. And that, after that fight, I got a lot of buzz from media, yeah. from people in the boxing world talking because yeah. I looked very good. Very good, impressive. Against a very good opponent, you know, yeah. undefeated, NABF, NABO, number five in the world, all that. So they had asked if that, if that, if I, if I was, you know, ready for a title. I'm like, dude, I'm ready. Yeah. Just gotta get yeah, the opportunity. Right. It still took some time for yeah, me to get the title fight because obviously the champions they got their own plans, they got their own agendas, they're fighting each other first or whatever. But I was ready from that point. I already knew what I had, and I still fought a few more times after that before I finally got to the to the title fight. But I already had all the confidence at that point. That I was the fight. Were, that, that's that was what the fight up your, to that, the next that level. got me to that next level. That got my confidence up to the yeah. next level, and also allowed everybody to see my skills. Yeah. Because prior to that. I was fighting fights on on FS1, Fox type of shows, yeah. or or other lower you know uh, networks that not everybody gets to see sometimes, yeah. like Telefutura, more of the Hispanic Latino correct, correct. community. So some people knew about me, but not the general audience. That one being on HBO, just open opened up, opened up, up everything. Up. Yeah, and then I fought several times on HBO after that, and. Then HBO, you know, picked it up even more, and yes. I became champion, and it just started who, to really who, grow. Who did you beat to become the IBF champion? Well, I, well, my well, first it was title, IBF first, right? The IBF, no, no. My first title at featherweight was the WBO. I beat okay. Salido. Okay, Salido. I beat Salido for the title um, in 2013, January of 2013. Wow, damn! Eleven years ago. Eleven years ago. I beat him for the featherweight title WBO after he had been on a good streak. You know, winning Orlando, uh, Orla yeah, Orlando, Orlando Salido, City Salido, yeah. and so I beat him. Then I fought Lopez. From I Puerto beat Rico, Lo right? Yeah, Puerto Rico. Juan Manuel Juan 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 Lopez. Yeah, yeah, Juan Manuel Lopez. That fight. I beat him. Then I fought Rocky Martinez, another guy from Puerto Rico. He was the WBO 130 pound title holder. Okay. I moved up to 130, fought him, beat him. After he dropped me, he dropped me in the second round, and I got up. You know, I was not hurt. We kept fighting. Few rounds later, I think it was like the seventh round. I dropped him, and he was he was it. done. Yeah, I got him with a body shot. He couldn't he couldn't recover, so that gave me my second title. And then I had one title defense of that. I fought Juan Carlos Burgos from Tijuana. I remember Carlos Burgos. He yeah. had just fought Rocky Martinez and had a draw. A lot of people thought he might have actually won, but they, it was a draw. So I gave him the opportunity to fight for the title. I beat him unanimous decision. Um, so now I'm like I'm like you know it's now. I'm, I'm I'm up here now. Yeah. And then, unfortunately, we go into the legal dispute with top rank, and I got to sit out for two and a half years. Legal dispute that we had a you yeah. know court case litigation, yeah. all this mess. Let me ask you this, Mikey, because it's very important. A lot of people don't know what a fighter goes through, uh, training and all that. They just see the glamorous, oh, sure. he won and yeah, everything. Yeah. And I know every camp is very different for preparation for a different different fighter. Uh, I, I grew up with Joe and Rafael and them, and I always see them, the preparation, you know, yeah. sparring, uh, running, sure, uh, heavy bag, double limb bag, speed bag, all that. What will consist of you when you started doing all that? What will be your regimen? Waking up in the morning, then go. Well, no, normally, what we do with Rafael, remember, we we'll do sometimes 36 rounds on the floor. Uh, so people that don't know, they say, oh, man, he, he was but. They need to know what 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 you, look, what you went through the sacrifice the look, blood and tears. Yeah, look, um, I think I think to be at the highest level in boxing, you gotta give that extra, I don't know, one hundred and ten percent. You yeah. know, you you can't do it 60, 70 percent and still expect to get the same results. 
even if you're at 80 percent, 90 percent, the other guy that puts in that extra, you know, work, extra hours, he's going to be, he's going to be, you know, more, he's going to be growing more. He's going to be just the edge. Know, edge, he has the edge, the edge. Exactly. So in, in our case, my dad and my brother, Robert, we have a, a system that has worked and the work speaks for itself. You know, the Correct. results speak for themselves. My dad has a system that he likes to to apply to the fighters, and now Robert is doing the same, where we map out the, the, the weeks of camp. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's 10 weeks of camp, we map them out. He knows how many minutes we're going to be running on, on each specific day, how many rounds of mitts, how many rounds of heavy bag, speed bag, all that. And then also adds the, the sparring. We spar Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. All right. And then he adds up, as the weeks go by, we increase the rounds. And we try to peak, say, two weeks before the fight. So the week before the fight, we start tapering down on the rounds. So you let your body heal, relax. Correct. But you still got to keep, you know, working. Maintaining. Especially the weight. You got to start bringing the weight down. Correct. And then the week of the fight is, is, is mainly just the weight cut. But the work that it takes to get to that, you're talking about running in the mornings, whether it's a morning routine of, of running, sprints, you know, uh, doing polymetrics with, with with jumping hurdles and all yeah. that. That that takes an hour and a half to two hours of morning and, workout. And this is and the running is Monday through through Friday. That's, correct. That's every day, Monday okay. through Friday, and then on Saturdays, sometimes we would alternate. Sometimes we would do a running day, or sometimes we would do a boxing day okay. on Saturdays yeah. in the morning. Just depends on how the week went and and how your body is feeling. But Mondays through Fridays, it's a morning routine. Like I said, running, yeah. either at the track or sprints and hills, whatever it may be, but it's a morning routine, an hour right. and a half, two hours, um, followed by the gym in the afternoon. I always used to train in the afternoon. But in, be, in between that, Mikey, like say you run in the morning, you go eat your breakfast, you relax, you go to sleep, take a nap. Yes, yes. After after a run, I would, I, I would always go home, get my breakfast, sleep some more, yeah. wake up, maybe get a little bit of a lunch, some, some kind of you know, lunch in, in the middle of the day mm -hmm. and, and you're resting. Yeah. You want to rest. Resting yeah, is part of training. Yeah. You want to rest your body, heal your body so that it can perform at the highest level possible at the gym. Yeah. And then we go to the gym and that day could be, like I said, a, a bag day with mitts and all the, all the heavy bag yeah, equipment, all the speed bag, all that. Um, or it could be a sparring day. If it was a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, it's It'll a sparring, sparring day. And after the sparring, you do the rest of the work too. Yeah. You do the heavy bag, you do the yeah. mitts or whatever, you know, on the schedule. Um, out of all that, finally, when you're done, you know, you do a little bit of, you know, workouts with a strength coach. coach if, if you have a strength coach, yeah. if now you do it on your own. Um, early on, we just did stuff on our own. On your own and and yeah. not, not a lot, no, but yeah, we do it on your own. Eventually, you might hire someone maybe if you can afford it. You yeah. hire someone or if he's part of the team. Um, but I mean, once you're done with the day, I mean, you're, you're exhausted. You're beat up. Oh yeah. You're beat up, you know? So you get home, you get your dinner, your body's you exhausted. You want to go to sleep. You want to go back to sleep. Yeah. You want to go straight to bed. Maybe you kind of chill a little bit with your boys right there while you're eating dinner, yeah. you know, relax, a little un unwind a little bit, you know, from the day and yeah. crack a few jokes or whatever, <laughs> but your body's tired. So you go to bed, you hit, hit, hit the bed, go to sleep. Cause next morning it's all over again. And you do that for, you know, for 10 weeks. Career. And then after the after you're done with your fight, you don't stop. Yeah. Like say you take a couple of days off, a couple of weeks. Okay, when you're at that level, you can take yeah. a, a month off, but then you got to get back into it. You got to get back into it and get you know in shape again. And then once training camp starts, it's all over again. So it's a lot of work. Oh, a lot of time. And they all it is. It takes away a lot of your time also, like away from your family, away from the family, from friends. So when I was in boxing, you know, training and and, and fighting, forget about. Any type of birthdays, forget about you know baptisms, school baptisms, graduations, a, a, anything, anything that has to do with holidays or anything. Like that, forget about that. You you're in training. Everybody else could be celebrating. Even but you're the, not. even even uh, you know? losing the, sometimes the birth of your children. Which I, I missed I missed my my daughter's birth. Yeah, my my firstborn. Wow, I was at a fight. I had to go to a fight, and my daughter's being born. You know, it, it's you you. I, I can kind of laugh at it. Cause I could have easily fucking said, nah, fuck that. I ain't gonna fight. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go spend this time with my daughter. I get you know? the choice because you just but, said that because it's true. You know, but at the moment, 
you know, our goal is is boxing. Yeah. I'm doing this for everybody, not just for myself. Yeah. It's not for that I'm being selfish. Your family. It's for everybody. It's gonna benefit all of us. You know, I want to go get this 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 fight so I can make some money so I can you know support give, your you house, know, my, my my house, yeah. you know, my family, you know, wife, todo. Now looking back, I'm like I probably could have taken another fight a couple weeks later. But <laughs> at the moment, our mind is boxing, it's working. You got to put boxing in front of everything else. Yeah. My birthday's in December. For some reason, I fought a lot of times in January. So since since November, we're in training camp. Yeah. November and December para pelear and so we can fight in January. Yeah. yeah. So forget about Thanksgiving, forget, <laughs> forget about my birthday, forget about Christmas. Christmas, forget about New Year's. It's like I'm in training camp. See, that's the people. People don't see that. That's the thing. They just see, oh, he's just fighting. Nah. Great, he became a world. They don't see the sacrifice yeah, that you went through, man. The, you know, it, it, missing your wife's birthday, your kid's birthday, school everything, graduations, everything. all that. A lot of times, you miss out on on, on what everybody else gets to enjoy. Yeah. And even if, I remember, okay, my birthday for for when I was getting ready to fight Dejan. I fought Dijon in January of 2017. Mm -hmm. So December of 2016, I'm in camp. Yeah. Getting ready for my fight. And it's my birthday. And I'm at the gym. I'm working out. You know, happy birthday, whatever. Then we go home. I'm going back to camp. And for some reason, they said, oh, you know, my dad, my mom, and my sisters, and, you know, wife, and everybody's like, oh, let's let's go up there, you know, because it's your birthday. Let's go spend some time. Oh, okay, cool. So we get there, and they're waiting for me with Norteño and Banda, whatever, and I'm like, oh, cool, you know, yeah. thanks. They bring out a cake. I'm not eating no fucking cake. Yeah, of course. So uh, they brought a cake <laughs> out. I ain't eating that. You know, everybody else had a different food. They had like a barbecue going. Yeah. I couldn't eat any yeah. of that. I had a special meal for me, you know. So it's kind of like, I appreciate the gesture and everything. Of course. But, but at the same time, it's kind of like, I don't, I don't. throwing it in your face. I don't need kind of, it. I don't yeah. need this. I'm not going to eat and I'm, I don't need it because yeah. I know my mind is boxing. I know my mind is set to, you know, go in the ring, go kick ass. I appreciate it, but I don't really need it because now it's almost kind of like you said, it's throwing it in your face a yeah. little bit. Not, not, they don't mean that. Of course not, because but they don't know. But they don't know, they don't what know that sacrifice. Yeah, exactly. They don't know what I'm going through. You know, I've already been in camp. You know, yeah. five six weeks prior to that, I'm deep in camp yeah, and now. You're focused, and, and, you're ready and, to kill yeah, somebody. Yeah, you know. So it's 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 a little hard to understand when a fighter is deep in camp. Yeah. And everybody else is gonna go out or celebrate this, celebrate a birthday or or Christmas or whatever. Yeah. You know, it, unless they've been in those shoes, they really can't. They cannot can't understand. Tell you they, they can't. Will tell never, you. They will never. They understand. won't understand. Even the fans will not never understand no. that because some fans come out and say, "Man, he could have done that better," but they do not no, understand, you don't know. man. And and even okay, and and then you you're dealing with with all that. I believe that most fighters will always, every fighter will always say, "Oh, I'm 100 percent for ready. I'm I'm this and that." That's a lot of just you know marketing publicity. Of course. They're never 100%. Never. There's always injuries. little little injuries or little things. It could be the smallest thing. It could be a damn nail that you yeah. cut a little too short and it's going to bother you. Yeah. Or on your on your toes. Something simple. Something that might, might, might gonna, mess it, you up. It might mess up with, with your your your, yeah. your fight. It could be any little injury, not a major injury. Have you ever gone into a fight, Mikey, like injured or, or shoulder, yeah. elbow? It, that, it happens. That, that, that you said, man, I should just cancel it. There's a few fights that I... Possibly could have canceled. I know I could have canceled because yeah. medically I you, could have canceled. Um, but when you have so much on the line. Invested in time. And everybody, not just me, everybody's yeah. invested at that point. The promoter, the, the promotion promoter, and all the, that. the network, yeah. you know, the, the the fans and everything. It's a lot of pressure for you to have so on your that, back to to cancel last minute. And, and it falls on you. Right, yeah, because they said, "Nah, we don't want this guy no more. He made us lose millions of dollars." And it's happened before. It's happened yeah. before where other fighters do cancel, and then he don't ever get the opportunities ever again. It's happened. Yeah, we know of, of a few examples that fighters have canceled for for the right reason. Yeah, but because of that, now everybody's butt hurt. Yeah. The promoter, the network, never wants to offer you any opportunities. It's crazy, huh? And so we've known those experiences. So I I didn't cancel the fights, fights that I should have canceled. I didn't. Can you give us a little which which fights, were, Mikey? Um, even though I won, I probably should have canceled the Juan Manuel Lopez fight. I was really, really bad really? for that fight. You end up knocking him out as well, right? I knocked him out in the fourth round. Yeah, but I failed to make weight. I was really bad. I was, I was sick. Um, I couldn't make weight. I was just dehydrated. I was too. That's what I was beat asking. up. Too beat up. Yeah. 
And it's not that I didn't want to make weight. I just, my body shut down. How many pounds were you overweight on that fight? A uh, pound and a half. The scale, actually, if you look at the video, you can go check it out. The video yeah. on, on, it's a two-day, HBO did a two days with Mikey Garcia special. Oh, okay. And you can actually see it. The I had checked my, the scale, the original scale, the, the actual official scale, I had checked it. I was a pound and a half over. Okay. But when it came to, to the weigh-in, the, the scale was on a cord. And it was tilting, and it read two pounds. Ooh. Because that made it even worse. Yeah, of course. Because now they got more leverage on, oh, he's two pounds over. Yeah. So it cost me money How to much negotiate. Money? I'm curious. A lot of people don't understand this because this happened to us with uh, Diego Corrales versus Castillo. Yeah. How much did they fine you for that, I, for each pound? I had to pay I had to pay $150,000. $150,000 for a pound and a half. Can you believe that? <laughs> I mean, it, it read two pounds, yeah, but honestly, like it was pounds, one and a half. Like $50,000 uh, a, 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 a half a pound. A half a pound. Uh, yeah, it, it was one hundred fifty thousand dollars that we had to pay um, to to have the fight continue. Yeah. I probably like I, I, if I, I had canceled, I could have canceled the fight because medically I was I was you were, I was, you, I was drained, you were you were exhausted. We had a doctor come and and uh, observe me after the win because mm -hmm. I was throwing up. I passed out. I was bad. So we had a doctor come in and 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 check me out in the in the in the room, mm -hmm. and he says, "Dude, like you need to come to the hospital." I'm like, I don't want anybody to know that I'm bad. He says, Well, I can give you some IV, but you're 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 beat up. Like your body can't can fight. Yeah. I'm like, I gotta fight tomorrow. Yeah. And he says, You won't be able to fight. I'm like, I'm not gonna cancel. Yeah. Honestly, the night of that weigh in, I didn't sleep. First of all, I didn't sleep. You can't sleep, your body's all, you know, you're jittery. Thinking, yeah, you're thinking too much what's going on, jittery and all that. I uh I would Grab the remote to turn on the TV. So if, if if this is a remote, I'd grab it, click channel, whatever. You couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't let go of the of, of, the, of the remote. I would have to pry my hand open. Share your. My body was were so locking. locking locking up. That's for you, by the way. <laughs> they, were, they were locking up just from dehydration. Damn. My eyesight started to go Very blur. Nice. Everything started to blur, and my hearing had that little buzzing. The yeah. yeah. I couldn't hear. I couldn't see well. Um. I had the win. We couldn't do it. Whatever. I was. I was. I was bad. So we had a yeah. doctor come in. He's like, "Dude, like you got to go to the hospital." Like I don't want that. You know, yeah. I don't want anybody to see this. Right. I know. And so, at the time, my manager Cameron Duncan, rest in peace, Cameron. He he called my brother. He said, "Hey, how's Mikey?" Robert told him, "Well, actually, he's not good." Yeah. Because he knew I had failed to make weight. Whatever. Yeah. Talked to my dad, and like he's not good. He, Cameron's like, "Cancel the cancel. His health is number one. Like, dude, yeah. he can't fight." I told him, give me a couple of hours. Let me see what my body adjusts and recovers a little bit. Yeah. By dinner time, I felt a little bit better because mm -hmm. I had already had the IV. You had, you you had, had food some, some food. So I was starting to feel a little bit better, but my eyesight was still still right. blurry. Um, my my hearing came back. I'm like, okay, though well, that's a that's a sign. Yeah. Then after dinner, we go to bed. The next morning, I'm waking up and now I I can see better. I'm like. That's good. I can see better. I'm gonna go get some breakfast. I go get some breakfast. Um, again, you're hydrating a little bit more now. Yeah. So I'm feeling better. So it's noon, the day of the fight. Cameron, Robert, everybody's. Hey, how do you feel? Because we we still got time. Yeah. And I told him, No, I I, th I think I'm good. I'll, I'll be fine. My dad was very worried because he yeah. had just seen everything I had gone through to make weight. Yeah. Me passing out, throwing up. They had to carry me and all this. And I, I couldn't see, and, I, and my dad didn't want me to fight. Robert didn't want me to fight. Like no one wanted me yeah. to fight. I told him, nah, I'll be fine by by nighttime, nine p.m. When the fight, I'll be good. I'll be good. So when we get to the locker room and everything, I'm feeling better. But I mean, you're that, not a hundred. You're not a hundred percent. Yeah, definitely not a hundred percent. But did you when 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 you open? You know, this is one thing Joe told me. When fighters are are cheating themselves, right, Mikey? And they feel like they've done the work and that curtain opens to go into that arena. You, you, a fighter starts thinking, damn, I didn't run. I I was women. I was drinking. Did you feel like that when they opened the curtain? You know what? I did my training, but I'm not 100%. Were you kind of like... I I knew that I wasn't 100% because of what I had gone through. Correct. I was correct. sick. I had gone through all that. Yeah. But I had the confidence in the work. Yeah. But the doubt is still there. Like, I'm fighting Juan Ma Lopez. At the time, he was he was tough, thirty three and two with thirty knockouts, yeah. you know, dangerous. Yeah. But 
I actually had to give my dad confidence. I'm like, don't worry about it. This is going to be easy. And I, I'm trying to hype him up a yeah, little bit, you know, because yeah. I so can you tell got he's your corner pumped up as well. So they could be, you know, ready. I told him, he's going to come at me thinking I got nothing left because he saw me all drained, all beat up. He's hurt. And I've, I've been sick. He's going to come direct at me, and I'm just going to catch him. I'm going to catch him. So the first round, I boxed very, very careful, very smart, jabbing, 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 left hooks, jab. And at that first round, I, that gave me the confidence. I'm, right away, I'm like, I'm good. if I can if I can jab my way, I'm going to jab 12 fucking rounds, yeah. but I'm going to win. Yeah. Because he can't land. I'm going to keep jabbing and circling, circling, and jab, jab. Yeah. I'm going to win. Second round comes in, straight at me. Oh. I land a right hand, and I dropped him. I'm like, okay, this is going to be an easy That's night. It. Because if I can drop him right now, your confidence just, way blew up just blew up. Yeah. So I just kept boxing a couple more rounds. Fourth round comes, I dropped him, and that's it. It's yeah. over. So if you didn't know that I had gone through all that, people would have thought, damn, that was such an easy fight. Mikey didn't make weight on purpose so he could be strong. Yeah. Dude, they don't know. Fortunately, and, and coincidentally, they had that two-day special. They documented they, oh, some did of they that. really? So they aired that after the fight, and that's when people realized, like, fuck, no wonder he didn't make weight. He was fucking dead. But this no. is what I'm saying because a lot of people don't know, and you being here right now telling the experience that what you went through, and it's, and it's not your only you. This probably happened to uh, your brother multiple times. It happens yeah, to I, a lot of fighters. A lot of fighters because people just want to go. I mean, look, a lot of people spend millions and thousands of dollars to go see. Oh, for sure, their favorite fighters for sure. And just imagine you backing out of that. Yes, but they don't see the sacrifice. The, you're putting your life at risk. Every time you go in the ring, I've always said it, you know, you're putting your health, your, your life on the line. Yeah. People forget. People forget that every fighter that steps inside of that ring is putting their health and their life on the line. Um, in training camp, you know, you're trying to get the best shape, you're trying to get in, 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 in the best shape for the fight, and, and you want to be 100%. There's always a few little issues here and there that you run into, and you just deal with it. You know, if, if anybody's not mentally strong, to deal with 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 adversity and and then you know obstacles and whatever they're not then then they shouldn't be fighting bro yeah because boxing needs you to fucking up here a hundred if, if you're not if you're not then you should choose another job choose another career go, go, go retire go, go, go to go to don't, Walmart don't, don't be don't be crying that yeah. oh it's because you know this and that no yeah. then then don't don't do don't it do it then don't do it because honestly it is very dangerous oh, yeah. and if you're not hundred percent up here you know it's dangerous. Would you consider that would be one of your toughest uh, training camps, uh, Mikey? Uh, Out of all your career, that one would be the the toughest because of what I went through what for you went the, through. the weight, the issue. I had got sick a week before, before that, before, uh, yeah, Juan before, Manuel before Juan Manuel Lopez fight. Yeah. the week before, I was a little sick with the cold, okay. so I, I I stayed away from the gym for a few days, and that mm. kind of stumped yeah, my weight. weight. So then, when we tried to hit it, it was just too soon, possibly you know too much. Wait for the short amount of time. Yeah. My body fucking gave up again. I shut yeah. down, and, and that's what happened. So that was ex excruciating. That that was the worst okay. I've ever had. What are the big fights that you go through? Did you were, were you ever overweight again? And no, that was the only fight. That was the only one okay. I was over. That was the only time ever that I had missed weight. Other times, even though it, it's it's a cut, it's a of struggle. Course, you, yeah. know, you fucking gotta hit yeah. it. But I was never sick. I never got to that point. There were times where yes, I pushed and fought. You kind of faint. Yeah. But uh, that's almost normal. Like yeah. When I fought Robert Easter here at Staples Center, 2018. I was there. Was we good. um we we're doing the weight cut at a local gym, mm -hmm. one of those alley fitness or whatever. Yeah. And we we're doing some some training, and then we go to the sauna steam room. We come back out, you know, check your weight, and you know you, how you do it. We jumped in the in the spa. Just to kind of relax and yeah. let your body, you know, soak a little bit of more more sweat out, you know. All right. So we're just chilling. Some fans saw me and recognized me and they say hi and they asked me for a picture. And they now we're working, so yeah. not their fault. You know, they just don't understand. They don't yeah. know. But I mean us, you know, me, I'm Very not gonna I'm not, I'm not gonna tell them get out of here or yeah. anything. So I I'm like, okay, I'll I'll come take a picture. When I got up, oh man, Your that shit got me fucking lightheaded. I was, I was, okay, I've, I was told and I heard that if I can count to 10 while I'm breathing and if I can make it to 10, 11, 12, then I'm not going to pass out. Okay. That's kind of like some, like a rule of thumb yeah. thing. So I'm like, fuck, I'm so lightheaded, right? So I'm starting to count one, two, three. Dude, as Jeez. soon as they, they, they let go of me, I fucking no passed out. Yeah. Really? 
I, 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 my brother had to jump in the water with me because I, I just got up from where I was at, yeah. took a picture, and that's it. I sat back down, and I started counting, and they had they had just walked away, and I'm sitting down, and I'm counting. I'm looking at the clock, and I'm counting. I, like five seconds, I'm dead. <laughs> I fucking passed out. I hit my my cheekbone on the on the railing. Robert jumped in the water to pick me up. Uh, this is for the Robert Eastern yeah. fire. And, and, and that was that was for the weigh-in, you know. That was yeah. a couple hours before the weigh-in. Wow. So so that that's what happened that one. But again, I was it, it wasn't too bad to the yeah. extent like Juan Ma Lopez. Yeah. Uh, occasion. Um, this one is almost almost like it happens, you know, more often. Do you feel going into the the steam room and going into the sauna or using Epsom salt? To try to lose weight that messes you up uh, physically, you think sometimes. If you do it, if you do it regularly, I think it it does have get a toll. It, it takes a toll on yeah. you. The way we were doing it was only for like you know two pounds or whatever. Yeah. The last two pounds, because throughout the week we're losing weight by Correct. cutting the, the the food intake, burning a little bit of calories, and mm -hmm. again doing it again, and then the last day you cut the water. So you're just gonna maybe two yeah. three pounds is what, what you're doing. So it's not too much. I've seen and I've heard other fighters that are still dropping 14 pounds, 12 pounds the day of yeah. before the weigh-in or whatever, and Correct. that could be potentially dangerous. Very dangerous. Because now you're depleting your whole body of all Dang. the liquid, all the water, your brain, especially. That's dangerous. I think that's. I think to me. I think that's part of being lazy for some fighters that they do that. And they wait the, till the last, to the last minute. See, because I, I think you, I, well, the way we do it, Mikey, we I like like my with my fighter uh, two weeks before. Make sure we're at ten pounds. Yeah. We the next the week of the fight, we make sure we lose five pounds and yeah. we lose a yep. pound a day. Yeah. That, and and that's and that's how we also or at least for me that's yeah. how I do it. Yeah. I like to be on weight early. Um, the week of the fight, maybe five pounds. Correct. You know. Six, uh, maybe, six, maybe yeah. if, if you're a little overweight, okay. Yeah. But then you bring it down, you know, a pound a day, and you're still eating, you're still nourishing your body, you're still drinking water. Yeah. You cut the amounts, yeah. but you're still drinking water. So yeah. there's still fluid in, in your system versus the guys that take, you know, the last three days, no food, no water, Epsom salt baths, yeah. and then, you know, steam room and all. That's dangerous. Yeah. I, I think that's dangerous. Very dangerous. Because the salt. So, you know what? What, what it, I it, it sucks all all, all, your nutrition, all your nutrition, everything, everything. It's it's very bad, you know, physically on your body. It takes a toll on your muscles. You're gonna be all dehydrated. You're gonna be cramping up. Yeah. Because you got no 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 liquid. Yeah. And but the most dangerous is is, is your mental. brain. No no liquid in your in your brain in your head. The punches are gonna be you know dangerous. You know we we uh, Joe had a fighter that. That uh, he fought with, uh, and I'm sure you heard this story, the pre preacher Cologne. Yes. So Joe had that fighter. Um, he fought. We fought. Well, they fought preacher Cologne, and preacher Cologne kept getting hit in the back of the head. Yes. Do you think that fighter was going through the same thing? Um, well, nobody have. knows, but well, I think because getting hit, Look, yeah, you you're able to make. I saw. I seen. I've seen the 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 replays, the, the highlights on on that fight on that case it never seemed like he got hit in the back very hard correct there were punches in the back but nothing that was you know extremely visible yeah. like hard like that so that makes me believe that maybe Pritchard was exact, had, uh, had, had gone through you know issues. hydration yeah. you know exhaustion all that and that could have been possibly you know a major reason for for the end result yeah because some of those punches didn't appear to be so deadly hard like you see other fighters when they're swinging, you know, for with a right hook or left hook, everything's behind it. Yeah. None of those punches were like that. Yeah. But it was accumulating over the rounds. Yeah. But again, maybe maybe he did go through, you know, through all that, through all that you know, and people don't know. That's people don't know, and that could be possibly, you know, one of the reasons why he, you know, ended having that that injury. Yeah, man. That, that, and that, and that's, that's sad because, like like you said, that could happen to anybody. That could happen to anybody. Any fighter that goes through, and a lot of fighters go through. Most every fighter goes through something yeah. similar. Um, very few will be on way comfortably yeah. and and have no issues. That's one in a handful, you know, the, that will do it the right way. Most everybody struggles. Yeah, everybody cuts weight, you know, and, and, and they has go a hard time. because their body's changing. They're yep. maturing. They're becoming a man, or their body is just what it needs to be. But you need to sac make those sacrifices you sometimes. To. You have to, Mikey. Going going into uh, when you fought Errol Spence, did you have a camp? 
Si I'm going through this thing with uh, with Look, him. With, with Aero Spence, we, I can say we had one of the best camps. Mm -hmm. We spent four weeks up in, in, in uh, at Snack up north. Up north in, Sac in the Bay. Sacramento, right? Or? Uh, in the Bay Area yeah, over yeah, yeah. In, in San Carlos. Okay. Um, with uh, Victor Conte and Snack. Yeah. We did four weeks there in December. Mm -hmm. Came back out here in January. So we could train January, February, leading up to our fight in March with Errol. Yeah. We had a very good camp. Training was good. I bulked up a little bit for that fight, yeah. you know, with, with snack to, to yeah. train. And I was eating he has a the lot best of food. products. It was good stuff, bro. Yeah. Like, like you're, you're training good. Yeah. People think it's just a supplement. No, like, he fucking puts you to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's putting you to work. And, and every day, there's like, like, it's all like written down, right? So, Whatever speed you hit, he wants you to break that the yeah. next day and the next day. And that's how you accumulate, you know, over the four weeks or six yeah. weeks or whatever time you spend. That's how you get better. And you're also punching harder and you're working harder, you know, so it does help. Yeah. We bring it down to boxing. And again, I'm sparring good. There's days that we're sparring, you know, big dudes, yeah. fucking 160 pounders, and I'm pushing them back. I'm I feel great. There's days that I'm fucking boxing in circles around everybody. Yeah. So I felt really, really good. The only problem that we had was actually the week of the fight. We flew out on a Tuesday morning. To, my, to Houston, right? To Dallas. Dallas. That Monday night at the gym, after the gym, I started feeling like a little cold. Like, I, I don't want to get sick. Like, what the fuck? So I took some Advil, whatever, packed our shit. Next morning, four, five in the morning, we're flying out of Ontario to Dallas. And I'm feeling shit. sick. I'm feeling like shit. So I'm like, fuck, I don't want to get sick. I don't want to get sick. We get to, to Dallas Tuesday. We have to do, like, the media work, yeah, the grand arrivals, all that. And I'm I'm feeling bad. I'm like, I can't. I'm, I'm fucking sick. So that night, Tuesday night, we go to the hospital. We go to the urgent care, um, emergency room. Okay. And we're there, and, and you know, they take the vitals, whatever. Uh, my throat was being, like, I had an infection in the throat. It was closed. It was, it was hard for me to breathe. The... Um, I had a fever, 102, 103 degree fever. Damn, I, I was pretty bad. Yeah, wow. That was Tuesday night, midnight time. Like around, we were there 11 to midnight. So then the next morning I wake up and I'm still feeling like shit. They gave me some stuff there, pills, that shit don't work. Yeah. So I go back to the urgent care next morning on Wednesday. And I'm not telling nobody. Even, not even Robert knew about this. Wow. I never told my dad about it till weeks later. They're going to be shitting more bricks after the yeah, Manila so, fight. So we, we go to the urgent care. I tell them what's going on. I, I show them the paperwork from the night before. They're like, okay, um, I can give you a, a shot. It'll help you, antibiotics, whatever. I'm like, let's do it. So they do. They give me some some medicine, and they give me a shot. And I try to rest Wednesday, but we got obligations. We got media. We got press conferences. Yeah. We got all these things throughout the week. So instead of allowing my body to completely rest, I still got to do these obligations for pr promo. Yeah. You know, you got the press conference, you got media, you got media row, you got all this stuff. And then you got the weigh-in and all this. So I'm still taking medicine, and I didn't tell anybody. Yeah. Now, the only one that knew was Victor Conte, my cook at the time, Rafa and Rafa. Pita. <laughs> we knew. Yeah. Then the day of the fight, Pita told Robert, hey, Dad, like, we haven't told you, but Mikey's been sick, and this is going on. It's like, fuck. Fucking so then, Robert couldn't notice that you were sick? I, I was trying to hide it, everything, bro. <laughs> and then, so Robert comes to my room and says, hey, you've been sick. I'm like, yeah, fucking pretty bad. He says, all right. He says, you're not going to be able to fight the way we wanted to or the way we thought we would. Yeah. Like, just be careful, be safe. But, I mean, unless you want to cancel, because you can cancel. Legally, you got your medical, you know, yeah. records there and bills and everything. Like, you can you can cancel. You know how they always, the doctor has to inspect, check you before? Yeah. Okay, so how you guys pass that? So off? we had another doctor show. We that talked to a different doctor already. that he had done it. Oh wow! So that the commission's doctor wouldn't wouldn't be the one examining me. Wow. We had a different doctor. We explained to him. Yeah. And he passed me. I, I you know, wow. he he did it. Damn. He said, "Dude, like, are you sure?" I'm like, "Yeah." So we had another doctor, you know, sign documents, or whatever, and we presented those to the commission. When you go going into that yeah. fight, Mikey, with uh, Errol Spence, your body didn't react to nothing that no, you trained bro. for. Hard. After, after, I think it was like the third or fourth round, my body was just exhausted, that's tired. It. it was done. I yeah, had you had the greatest left. defense, I'll tell you that. I, I mean, that's all I could do. <laughs> Instinct, yeah. reflexes, you Correct. know, experience. Yeah. 
That's all I could you use. You couldn't let your hands go like normally Look, you were going. I felt so tired after four rounds. Damn. Exhausted. I'm, I'm exhausted. Really? That bad? I couldn't let my hands go. Yeah. I felt slow, sluggish. I felt my legs weak. Um, I had no movement. No, I had nothing. Yeah. No power. I felt very weak. Just like, just, just dead. Yeah. After four rounds, I was done. But all I could use was my defense, you know, skills, you know, yeah. for, to to defend, reflexes, and experience yeah. just to survive. I I tried a couple times. I would try, and I was just too slow. And he's very good. I've always said it. He reminded me a lot of myself in the in the way that nothing is flashy. Yeah. Nothing was out of this world. Like he it didn't have anything good. crazy fast or yeah. crazy full work or anything. No. But he was very efficient. Simple, Simple basic. Simple, basic textbook. Yeah. That's it. But very good at it. Yeah. Use his height, his reach, southpaw stance to manage the distance, the gauge the, the, the distance, the timing, yeah. everything. A lot of the, similar to the way I fought. Yeah. But when I fought him, like I said, I just didn't have anything in, in, in me anymore. After three, four rounds, I was done. Four rounds, Shit. done. So then there came a round where he picked up the pace a lot. I think it was like the eighth or ninth round. And after the round, I come back to the corner, and Robert and my dad were talking. Hey, like, we might stop the fight if you don't show us anything. I'm like, I'm. he's not hurting me. Like, I'm fine. Yeah. He said, well, you're not doing anything. I'm like, well, I can't fucking do shit. <laughs> but, you know, I'm not yeah. getting hurt. He never hurt me. I'm yeah. like, dude. Just, and, and then Pita, Pita's like, Dad, don't know. He's fine. Let, he's not getting hurt. If he gets hurt, that's one thing, but yeah. he's not. So then I'm like, watch. Let, let me pick up a little bit more on the on the next round. And then like the 10th round, I might have done a little bit more. Enough to kind of like, look okay. Look okay. Let them let me continue, you know? Yeah. Keep them from stopping the fight. So then like the 11th round, Arrow picked it up again, but I had to move a little bit more. Yeah. And then I think the last round, he just he knew it was 12 rounds. That's so he it. just kind of like. Just played around, pity patting and shit. Yeah, just to let the round go, yeah. and that was it. Mikey, when 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 did you decide already? Say, nah, I'm tired because I know you retired already, young. When did you decide? Say, hey, you know what? This is not for me no more. I, I'm not, I'm not hungry for it no more. It was it was uh, just the last fight with Martin yeah. Martin with with Sandor, Sandor Martin. The one in, uh, in Fresno, more. Fresno, right? Yeah. See, for that fight, we didn't we didn't even train. I didn't really yeah. train. I didn't ever train for that fight. Yeah. We we were trying to do that show, or at least the reason why I accepted that fight, because we wanted to get Bam a title fight. Jesse Bam Rodriguez. Bam, yeah, he's badass. We were promised a title opportunity for him. I that's what I requested. I'm like, okay, you want me to do this fight, but we need a title fight for Bam. At the time, Bam was trying. To, we were trying to get him a title fight. At, I think it might have been 108 mm -hmm. at, at the time, and we were promised the fight. Champion had agreed and everything. Two weeks before the fight, they're like, hey, the, the, the champion can't get a visa. He can't come. So then I'm like, then why the fuck am I going to do this fight for? Yeah. Like, I don't care for the fight. This yeah. doesn't do nothing for me. Yeah. I'm not even training. Like, yeah. You were just doing it for Bam. I was doing it for a favor, you know. Yeah, let's just yeah. do it. But then Robert and my dad, everybody's like, well, we're already here. Let's just do it. You know. It, was it a good payday at least? No. No. It's like, whatever, bro. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like, dude, come on. But <laughs> whatever. So... I knew I never told Robert or my dad, but I, I already had told myself I'm that's not doing you, you it. I'm not doing this again. I'm, I was only doing it for for for, for a favor. For, for a favor. Yeah. I already knew, and so we only trained maybe five weeks for that fight, and not even train like yeah. camp. It was just like whatever going through just the motions. Going to the gym, yeah. But because I already knew, like, so my mind you was already done. No I didn't want to. I kept telling myself like, okay, I only got three more weeks of this, and then I'm done. Okay. Okay, I got two happy. more weeks, and I'm done. I was happy for that. And then, like, the last week of sparring, I'm like, okay, this is the last day, the last fucking spar. I'm never going to have to do this again. Do you miss you it? No. Nah. <laughs> Why is that, Mikey? I'm curious to know, man. I'm curious I'm, always I'm, to know how a fighter. I know you, you've you been doing this since the age of 14. How old are you now? I'm 36. Oh, you're still young, man. Fuck. I retired at 33. I was 33 when a I retired. A lot of fighters cannot say that as well. Because you were very successful, and, uh, and I know you very smart. You're not a flamboyant. You're not a uh, a show off. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. I'm, I know you have your cars, your I'm toys. Not, I'm not. I'm not loud to where I want to be on the spotlight. Correct. You know that's 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 probably what allowed me, helped me retire yeah. happily. That I don't feel the need to be in the spotlight. I don't feel the need to have the camera in front of me. Yeah. Where other fighters they want they that. Want that so attention. the only way to do it is by fighting or by being somehow involved and you know being loud still. Yeah. I, I never really cared for that. And it was never 
like a dream of me to become world champion, be a fighter and do all this. But it happened. It happened, but it was never one of my like goals and dreams to do it. So it's easier to walk away when it's not your only goal in yeah. life or your only, you know, good thing that you got going. Uh, being having having a successful career allowed me to enjoy and earn yeah. and do a lot. But at the same time, it also helped me retire sooner. Yeah. Because I don't need to be fighting. Yeah. To and do be, something and be healthy as yeah. well. Where you, Look, where you I'm retire. very happy. I'm very happy with my career. Yeah. I achieved more than I ever imagined. I accomplished a lot more titles than I ever imagined. Um. So. I'm young enough, healthy enough, and over accomplished. To Not me, a lot to of me, can... to me, that's. That's the best, yeah. you know, that I can still retire and still enjoy the rest of my life. Any regrets, you know, during the, from your career? Regrets, regrets. that you said? Regrets. Uh, I, I wouldn't say it's a regret, but like I said, I knew I could have possibly canceled some of those fights, yeah. especially like Errol Spence Errol or even Spence. the Sandra Martin. Yeah. I probably could have postponed that or canceled or whatever and avoid that loss with Martin. Errol Spence, I can't regret it because it was a big yeah. fight. and So it's not like I regret it, but... That was a big payday, too. It was too. a big payday, you know, and yeah. so it's also like, I can't regret that. Yeah. But on my record, I mean, I could have probably avoided that if I had just postponed it. But yeah. again, if it would have been earlier, a month before, I could have done that. Yeah. Yeah. But the week of the By fight, the way, you can't. come on, you can't fucking so, do that so shit. Much, so much money. Too much so money much... invested, too many millions of dollars invested yeah. in that promotion, the event is, can't cancel. Yeah. So fuck it. Let's go. Let's 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 take a shot. Let's see what happens. I know, you know? during I know during your career, Mikey, I know you were very successful and you made you know, not a lot of money. Not that a lot of fighters would accomplish that. Some fighters have not accomplished that, but I know you have your toys, I know you have your cars. Tell us your, your cars that you have. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I've seen your collection, when, I love it. <laughs> when 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 I did make good money and everything, yeah. Obviously, Everybody wants a toy, wants something, you know. Yeah. I waited a long time to, you know, discipline myself yeah. to afford what I wanted to buy. When I finally did, and yeah, I, I started buying cars, different cars. Can you tell us the cars that you have? Uh, I've, I've had, well, I've sold a few. I oh, bought did a few. you really? Yeah. I've bought and sold, oh, wow. you know. I know you have a Lamborghini. Oh, yes. you still have that yeah. one? Yeah. Okay, so, so I've had, at one time, I had two McLarens, two Rolls Royce, two Lambos, Damn. two Range Rover. I had two of everything. Damn, Mikey. <laughs> I had two of a kind, I had two of each. Um, but then, like I said, I have sold uh, off yeah. over, over time. You didn't even drive them that much either, huh? Some I've, dro I've driven more than others. Um, it just depends on the car. So some cars are more comfortable than others. So yeah. it depends on where you're going and, like, what they use for it. Like, I always, whenever I bought this, I always... Bought them with, with the mindset to enjoy them for a little bit and then get rid of them. Get rid of them. So I can buy something else. Yeah. You know, just kind of keep doing yeah. it. Enjoy and say, I enjoy had it. Enjoy it. I had it. it. And, you know, you don't really know what to expect until you actually have it yeah. and drive it and drive it for a few, you know, months or whatever, a year or whatever. Because it's not like you can just go and rent one out and test it out for a month. Yeah. You can't. That lamp was the most so, uncomfortable car to have, man. The one that I had, the SVJ that I had, the worst car most uncomfortable car. It was yeah. worse. It was bad. So that one I sold. That was the first one I sold. I got rid of that one. <laughs> it was a badass car for the track. Yeah. Sick car. But very uncomfortable. So I I, I got rid of that one. I had a different McLaren uh, collectible, very limited edition. So I bought that one with the intent of, you know, selling it for, yeah, for more money. And, and I did. So I'm nice. like, okay, perfect. Um, I have another McLaren right now, a 650. It's more of a, I use it more of, I'm um, daily, not daily, but yeah. I use it more often because not it's not that uncomfortable. Yeah. It's it's actually pretty cool, uh, comfortable ride. Um, so it, you know I can move around, yeah. and not be uncomfortable. Co correct. And it's not even that much money. That, that was like the that was probably the cheapest one that I bought out of all of them. What was that? You think? How much I paid for it? One fifty. All right. It was it was it was like super cheap super compared cheap. to everything else. You yeah. know, so so it's not bad. And I can drive it. It's not yeah. that big of a deal if you put miles yeah, in yeah, or yeah. whatever. Um, the SV is a little more comfortable than the SVJ, but not comfortable. Yeah. The seats are a little bit better, but not not comfortable. Not comfortable, enough. you know. Um, so I I probably sell that one too sometimes. How about your Viper? 
Oh, I'm keeping the Viper. Yeah, but you See, have... those, those are sentimental things. Yeah, that's The it. Viper and my Challenger, I'm never getting rid of. Why, why sentimental? Um, Well, the starting with the Challenger, I like the Challenger muscle look. It's a 2010. Okay. I bought it new back in the day. Is that the one that has like a thousand horsepower? Yeah. It's, it's, it's nice built. It's built by Richard Petty. So I sent out my car to North Carolina, Richard Petty's garage years ago. Tricked it out, put everything into everything it. Everything you need to do. So it's it's really really built like a muscle car, you yeah. know, sick ass car. I'm never gonna get rid of that one. That one's made like for me almost, you know. Yeah. So that one I'm keeping for that reason, and it still has a nice fucking look, you know. Yeah. It's got the nice muscle car, classic look, Challenger. Yeah. Um, uh, the Viper. I've always been a fan of the Viper. It's a great track car. If you want to take it to the track, fucking outperforms nice. performs with all these other fucking half a million dollar cars and more. So it, I it's, thought that, it's I sick. thought that was an uncomfortable car. You know it that? is uncomfortable. Yeah, it it's uncomfortable because it's loud. It gets uh, hot. The drone fucking you yeah. come you you go on a trip from here to Vegas. You get out of the car. You feel, you feel the already. your head like this, and you're ready to go to sleep. And you, you drove know, it to Vegas. Yeah, I've driven a couple times, and it, it, it's bad. Yeah, it, it's horrible. Yeah. Um, uh, but when you're driving it, it's fun. Yeah, stick yeah, yeah, shift, yeah, yeah. still stick shift. So it's got the old school, you know. Six gear, so you can play with it, and yeah. it looks aggressive. It looks, you know, like a race car. It's this nice big old wing in the back, yeah. and all. so uh, you know, it's cool. Yeah. You know, um, how about your uh, Land Rover? Right, you have a Land Rover. I have, I have, I have a. Special. You you I flew that in from somewhere, right? Well, we drove it across. <laughs> well, really? we flew we flew one. Well, okay, we didn't flow it, but one came from the UK to go. Texas. Yeah, Texas here. I remember. And the other one. one was from Mexico. Mexico here. I drove that one across. Um, oh, I so I got, I got two. I got two of those, uh, and, and they're the Land Rover Defenders, the yeah. the older, the old uh, version. older old version, um, not the new one, the the older one. Um, those are cool because not many people see them around. Cause, yeah. you know they're they're more rare. Yeah. Um, they're very good for off roading, yeah. for for snow, for all that. I mean, they got the four by four and all that's hooked up, really nice. What's the what's the what's the most fun you had with that one? I've taken it to the snow, off roading in the snow, no chains, no nothing, just hauling ass, getting in the mud, getting in deep puddles all the way to the top. The motherfuckers don't don't and give they up. They still go. They still go. Do water go inside the car? I mean, sometimes yeah. you get a little bit of. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, depends on how deep you go in the water, yeah, but yeah. overall, I mean, they can go deep. And deep, really. You're good. You know, they drive. It's got the snorkel too, so it oh, keeps shit, going. Yeah. Um, the one I have the the roof, I, I had a different conversion for the roof, so it pops open for a tent. So we've camped out on that a couple oh, times. Cool. Like we're in the desert, go off roading. Yeah. Over there, they do this uh, thing, uh, King of Hammers. Yeah. And it's like a big off roading thing that they do, and so you're just there. You, you don't want to drive, just fucking pop it open and spend the, the night. Chill. You chill, yeah. And now going to your toys, your other toys. Oh, I got a lot of that. <laughs> I like to collect. I like to collect lots of firearms, lots of handguns, and now I have rifles too. I've, I got a Are lot you of really? stuff. I, I originally I was only into the handguns, and yeah. I, I still am more drawn to the handguns. What's your favorite handgun? I like the 1911s, okay. 45 1911s. Has any of them got st get stuck on you? You gotta keep them clean. Keep them clean. That's 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 the the, the number one thing. Um, now there's other guns that are maybe I don't want to say more reliable, but they're more practical because they're easier to clean and yeah. easier to manage. So people are you know now like. The Glock. Yeah. I have a few, and those, you can put them through anything, and through they're anything. always going to keep firing. It's easier mechanics, so yeah. it's, it's easier mechanism, so that's why they don't jam. Older style 1911s, got to keep them clean, you know? With One that quick, look, the 1911 look, the feel. They're, they're, I have, you know what? It's, I, it's I have beautiful. A, I have a Springfield. I have a Hellcat. Oh, yeah. I fell in love with a Hellcat, man. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's small. Yeah, the smaller barrel. Yeah. But this one comes with... A, with um. I don't know what you call the the, the muzzle. Mm -hmm. You could remove the muzzle and all oh, that. Oh shit! Yeah, it's a, it's really it's called a Hellcat. Um, What's yeah. it chambered in? It's an it's a nine. Nine? Yeah, nine. Because some some of those I remember I don't know if it's that one, but some of them you could replace. You can just change the the barrel the barrel and and, and go to like a twenty two. Correct. So that you can just you know shoot you know eat cheaper ammo yeah. and fucking practice with that, and then you can switch the barrel to the nines are, are you Mikey's I know you collect firearms and all that. I'm I'm a guy that believes in I'm a conspiracy theorist sometimes you know okay me I, I always say fuck I gotta have some something happens I gotta have food 
a lot of ammo more than than. Are you are you, are you that are you the type of guy considered? Well, be? I do carry a lot of ammo at home. I have a lot of ammo. Yeah, I like to stock up on a lot of oh, ammo. Yeah, I have, I don't know, over five thousand rounds at home. Yeah, you know, maybe more. I have really? a lot. Yeah. Um, and most of my firearms, like I said, the handguns, most of them are in forty fives. I have maybe three or four in nines. Okay. And I got separate ammo, obviously, so I don't want to be yeah messing around with that. Yeah. So I, I don't know if I want to say I'm a conspiracy theorist, also yeah. to be prepared. Do you have a? But a I do want to have all that. Do you have food store? I don't. I don't have. I don't have the food and and, and store up. My, I you know, tell my, store up. At, at 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 the ranch where I am, I feel I'm pretty safe because I'm up yeah. on the hill. If anything were to happen, I can, see, I'm, I'm, I can <laughs> see everybody coming up, so I'm, I'm good. Um, uh, Mikey, going back, we're almost done here, but I wanted to ask you one more thing. Going back to the boxing, one more question is, did you ever spar with Robert? Once. Like everybody. I spar, How did that I go? I spar with Robert. He kicked my ass. <laughs> I spar with him when I was first, first starting to box. I was, like I said, 14 years yeah. old, maybe 15, somewhere in there. And I think he was just about to retire or had just retired, you yeah. know, something around right at that time. Um, and I think we we sparred probably like three, four rounds one time. Just, But he took it easy on me, but he still kicked my ass. You that's know, he, what, that's he was what, just on top of me and I just couldn't get off. And, you know, he kicked my ass. Um, but that was the only time. It, it wasn't like a sparring where he's getting ready for something or I'm getting it. ready for something. You guys were it just, was just, he was just hey, going there some, some rounds for you. All right, cool. But yeah, he, he kicked my ass. That's funny. <laughs> Well, Mikey, where, where can my these fans, boxing fans, will follow you? Your Instagram, your yeah, social. Yeah, well, I, I know there's people that have always asked me about Facebook and mm -hmm. Twitter. I used to have that. I don't use it. I don't have it. Okay. People keep messaging me that oh, they follow me on Facebook or Twitter. I'm like, dude, I don't even use those accounts, so I don't know who's using them. They're probably asking you, Someone, hey, can you send me some money? And they and they. <laughs> Follow, they fucking talk like if it's me. Oh wow! So don't use that. Don't follow on on Facebook nor Twitter. Okay. Because I don't I don't use only them. Instagram. Instagram at Team Mikey Garcia. Instagram, Team Mikey Garcia. Team Mikey Garcia at Instagram. Um, I'm I'm that's that's me. I'm I'm a handle that. Any recommendations one. for the young fighters that are out there, Mikey? That you see now, like I know we spoke earlier. You said you know there are a lot of fighters that fight six rounds and they think they're world champions. Yeah. And they think they're on top of the world. Look. Um. Advice for the young fighters, up and coming fighters, you know, you got to put in the time. Nothing comes easy. Yeah. Uh, be patient. Don't rush it. Be patient. Just train, learn, be in shape. And again, don't think because you want an eight round fight or a 10 round, oh, sh let's go sell it now. Yeah. Get your ass back in the ring. Take care of your body. Be healthy. That's the only way to really make it in the, in, in the elite level. Because yeah. we've seen a lot of fighters that have the skills, but they lack the discipline. Correct. And they never make it. Lots of examples that we can go through. I don't even want to mention names, but we, you and I both yeah. know lots of names that had been popular, that had been, you know, hopeful and, and, and big I, names, and, and they don't make it. Yeah. But why? Lack of, of dedication, lack of discipline. Because they got the skills, they got yeah. the speed, they got the power, they got the looks, the charisma, yeah. and everybody's fucking hyping them. Dude, they're big. And it gets to them. It, it gets, gets to their head, you know that? It gets to honest with you. And then they have the, these people around them Messing them up, yep. which is the sad thing about and, it. And then they they lose, you know, their their career. They they the potential is is down the drain. So you know, stay stay humble, take your time, be patient, uh, <clears throat> train, learn, be observant, be a student of the game. Yeah, you know, watch fights, watch the good fighters. Look at what they do. Look at why they do. Learn it. the good habits, learn not bad habits. It. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, if if you switch trainers for whatever reason, but you know, learn, learn. Yeah. You know, don't. Don't think that you know it all. And that's the problem with these you kids. Know? But I just want to say, Mikey, thank you for coming. Of course. And also, I always wanted to say that I've always been a big fan as well, and I've been to a lot of your fights, yeah, which was you, good, thank man. You. Mikey, thank you so much for coming to to talk to us, man. Thank you, man. Always a pleasure, and I appreciate the, the invitation. I thank everybody for the love and support. Yeah. Uh, no longer actively boxing, but we're still here. We're still around, yeah. so yeah. I appreciate it. Thank You're you. You're still relevant in boxing. Yes. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Mikey. Thank you. That was pretty good. Salud.